Still a very good engage tool, but they're gonna deny the Ari <laughs> and potentially look for the Wukong unless Navi takes it here. I like this from Yagao. He's like, you know what, Knight? You don't get this champion anymore. We can't <laughs> deal with this champion. No more of the Galio shenanigans. But you know what's open? Knight can pick Syndra. And Syndra is going to be nuts. It's, it's I know, oh. you're excited. It's banned oh. away because Look, BLG sorry, did their I'm homework. I'm blinded by the arena lights. <laughs> yeah, I love the enthusiasm, <laughs> yeah. though, but uh, yeah, not today. Ooh, wow, we're not going today. straight through the pixel Ooh. bands here. Both junglers locked in, and the Zaya comes out from Elk. I really like this champion on Elk because I think he and Lee probably some of the best Zaya plays that we have. Of course, Ruler does have a championship skin on this uh, champion as well, yep. but still, 32% damage share is not a joke. And this man does magical things when JDG locks in those melee solo laners. But speaking of JDG, I mean, we've got Lissandra coming through from Knight, so it might not be that Syndra, but something to, I guess, cancel out your gal here on the Ari. And we're seeing the Vi versus Wukong from game one again, but this time yep. the champions have been switched around, so can Shun make the exact same impact that Kanavi was able to find and get the early game rolling. This time, Pet alongside Ari, where they are pretty much taking away JDG's composition and putting it into their own circumstances. <laughs> and I love that ban. On getting Blitzcrank respect yeah. bans in the LPL finals. That says a lot about his growth as a player, doesn't it? But the Thresh is going to be answered to try and remove some of the safety from that Aphelios in the bottom side. So that's Thresh gone and Lulu gone. Yeah, quite a bit as well with the Rakan alongside it. So I'm curious about what JDG are going to pull out down here because we're getting into the Nautilus territory, the Leona, some of the harder gauges and, and supports with also, as you mentioned, Munch, Lulu taken off. We're really going down. Yeah, On's champion pool is really getting narrowed down here. There's uh, Rakan, the Thresh, the Blitzcrank all gone now. So maybe he leans towards something, like you said, the Leona, where he is very comfortable on mm -hmm. it because I'm not a very big fan of Lulu. I think On has a very big voice when it does come to the engages on BLG, but we'll have to wait and see what they decide to opt into because three games in a row, it's going to be top lane counter picks for both sides. I do feel like the Nautilus would be nice for BLG, but the thing is, if you don't ban it, it's quite nice for JDG yeah, as well. It's going to be Renata taken off of the board here, but the Mr. Kench, Ooh, as he okay. prefers to be known, locked in for the bottom side, missing a ruler, playing weak side down there. You talked about this in game number one, Kitty. You talked about this being on the board Missing historically as well. Uh, even when he was on WE, it was a time of time, Kench. He's played so much of it. Now we have to see what it's responded by as we talked a little bit about the engage potential on on Sooning. I think Leona, I think Nautilus, I think of commandeering the bottom lane and setting up BLG here. A lot of single target CC. I'm assuming yeah. four ruler on that Aphelios, but you need to know that this Nautilus pick was into a Tom Kench. And if you True. don't go for the Tom Kench or if the Tom Kench isn't dead before the fight, then all of that single target CC is going to get taken away. And now Bin has to go for the blind pick. This is 369's opportunity to take over. Because with a Lissandra in the mid lane and an Aphelios that wants to play for later on in the game, this oh. does feel like a draft that JDG really could play towards 369 for once. <laughs> Tabe behind him. No, you don't. Lock in the Gwen. <laughs> we need some more AP damage, apparently. <laughs> and BLG are going to go with that option. But look, as we talk about 369, so far it has been Cassante throughout the series. We've seen it so many times. Run into the Gwen matchup. You know what? He's done it completely fine, so why not run it again? Yep. Complete He's... contribution to the Shy. Sorry, but... No, you go, you go, you go. Cassante, I mean, I think the Shy really just speaks to me now. Man has been loving the Cassante this split, and 369 also following his footsteps, yeah. unfortunately, as yep. our favorite, or Hysterics' favorite Did you favorite say player. unfortunately following the footsteps no, of the no, Shy? No, no, I'm saying unfortunately that the Shy has been... Oh, all right, no. Yeah. I thought you are like, well, that's a bit... I paused at a weird spot. I'm so sorry. The Shy's already dead. Let him go. <laughs> I saw the Shy today. <laughs> you did. At He's alive. Nice. And if we like, you didn't get a photo with him. Already the disappointments there, but I hope we don't say the same thing about BLG. Kitty, run me through BLG starting off because we have a different style of comp this time around. The desire. Duo where the proactiveness just wasn't there. So brought them this far. Match point for JDG though. Their dynasty's already here. And the fans are firing up for them, looking for another title. Back to back champs. If they can win this or the next two games after. It's BLG who have to find themselves in the driver's seat. It's JDG 2 and 0. Oh. BLG, they were the underdogs coming into playoffs in fifth seed. They were the underdogs making their way through the bracket. Six best of fives to get here today. And now in the final, feels like underdogs here in game three as they're 2 0 oh down. JDG feeling strong, feeling confident, and looking. 
good on the stage. And there. making themselves known to the world as maybe a bit more of a household name. We talk consistently about RNG, about EDG historically, even the WEs. I could go to IG as well, teams that have won world championship. But in recent years, I feel like Jing Dong are now the new, I guess, emperors, we could use the word, right? If they're able to find their win here in the series at any point, their legacy not only has it begun, but I feel like it's going to be ingrained into the LPL on this 10th anniversary here in 2023 spring. Slowly but surely developing this roster over time and now you know, 9 3 6 9 reunited again from Top Esports. Ruler coming over from the LCK. Definitely feels like a roster that you've got to fear in the LPL. But BLG, no slouches. And again, changing their tact this year compared to what we historically expect from BLG, which is just throwing money and, and trying to win <laughs> that way. It's not worked for them in the past. And now BLG changing their strategy, going with a roster of players with a lot of potential and making it all the way to finals. It's crazy, isn't it? Because for, for BLG, the Uzi roster you're talking about, the one where all the money sank into it, it was a perfect roster on paper. It made sense, but it just didn't come into fruition. And the fact that now the leftover, the scraps here from BLG are in this spot. They need to show us why they got here first of all, but still it's a good sign as against JDG, it's a different task. I do really want to highlight, or well, talking about ADCs, I want to highlight Elk and his uh, addition to the team. I think he has probably been the most underrated out of everyone else, but we do see a bit of counter jungling as I pause that point because Kanavi, being the usual Kanavi, he is going for those counter jungle camps. He's doing it right in the very face of BLG now here. Yagao, not going to move on over. Doesn't realize it's going on. <laughs> it shouldn't. Coming for his crooks, he's going to be spotted out. Can Kana oh, Kanavi's got smite available. He might just be able to steal this one away, oh. and he does. I think oh, he got that no, one. Looking no. for the little ones as well. Shun trying to escape. BLG moving on over, but so's missing. Right, everyone compacting in on just needs a dredge line. Kanavi might have to flash, and he gets bitten <laughs> by his own tactic. Was it worth it in the end? It's about sending a message. He's got ah, a 2 CS lead. Point. That's it. Very worth the <laughs> flash. Exactly. Stole the big crust, burnt the flash, but what does it mean? Maybe the championship. Who knows, Hysterics? Well, again, it wouldn't be Kanavi if it didn't end like that. Again, it can burn in his face, or it can work out perfectly, but that aggression is what we know him for. As Shun will now climb his way up to the top side. Kanavi's not here. It's a swap of the map for now. And the thing I love about BLG's composition for this game three is Elk is on the Zaya. He's more than happy to weak side. You can't really engage onto the Zaya after she safely scales to that level six, and you just pull all your resources onto this win, which was a blind. That's how confident Vin is feeling for this game three. So Shun already wasn't his way there, but BLG looks for a little bit of action in this bottom lane. They are trying to contest the wave here as Ruler. Strong weapons, Knight could be in trouble. That's a great oh. charm and it denies everything! What a first blood from BLG. A brilliant start to game three when your backs are against the wall. Shun wakes up ever so. That interrupt was perfect and I'm glad to see BLG working as that cohesive two-man unit again. And that is the proactiveness that we have been wanting from BLG. Shun getting the first blood as well, so he's gonna work towards that Black Cleaver very early on, but this is just a really nice charm from Yago to start everything off, as Knight thought he was safe with that E going towards the other side of the wall, but interrupted by Shun, which is just yeah. very beautifully done by the jungle of BLG. Yeah, basically no opportunity to escape the charm, like you say, denying the claw. I mean, he could have flashed at the end, but realistically, what would that have done for him? Yagao could have just mashed, uh, just could have just matched, sorry. Yeah, like you say. So now Ruler looking for a plank, dodges away from the hook from on. So far, so good for JDG on the bottom side. Yes, they've got a Tarp Kench, but they win in the lane anyway. Yeah, the wave going to be uh, taken here as Elk and On seem to be backing away. Meanwhile, top side, Bin's not doing too bad himself, and we've been saying in a matchup that feels like uh, could have been abused by Bin more in game one, game two with the Jacks. It should have gone a bit better. This time around, I think earlier on, Bin has a bit of advantage here on the Gwen. And it's showcasing some of the play potential that we could be looking forward to from BLG's top lane. A lot of AP, like you said, for this game three, the Gwen, the Ari in the solo lane. So if those two champions don't get ahead, then it's all going to be up to Elk as he's on Desire and it's one of his most proficient champions. But I want to see more for this win. I mean, the Herald is going to be up in two minutes. I, the Dragon is also up right now. Yep. But if the Herald gets dropped for Bin, that is where BLG starts their story. GDG wants to try and fight for this straight Yagao with the target. Spirit Rush forced out. You'll be happy with that one. A summoner, uh, an ultimate, sorry, used. Kitty said that 
That dragon now up and available. JDG starting because of it as well. A shield hovering on the outskirts. He doesn't have the ultimate himself. So not able to get that cease and desist into it. So first dragon just looks like it will be JDG's. I do want to see some more proactiveness from On. Okay. He needs to leave lane, he needs to hover mid lane. Yago has the ultimate available, he can connect all the CC on tonight and maybe get a snowball starting there and then work towards that vision control for this Herald because you don't need the Nautilus sitting in the bottom lane. Elk is fine by himself. And I like the idea of focusing on Knight as well, especially with how he's been performing this series. No. Like, we keep on talking about the fact that he really wants this fight. This was a big leap for him to leave top esports for his first split with JDG. To be that win would be huge. Looked amazing so far this series, but one pick already for BLG. Shun almost level six. That could be a scary moment for Knight in the mid lane. It really could. Again, we've already seen the flash burn. It is, or rather, the interruption burn by Shun and his flash. Knight still has a summoner, but. It's going to be an interesting piece of action if we can find anything missing. And Kanabi moving to this mid lane. Oh, the bottom lane. What's happening down there? JDG are moving as a unit of BLG try. Oh, the turret is oh gorgeous. Ruler. That was very nice. And now JDG, they want to punish it. They want to find BLG out of position. At least they're missing for now. But Peekaboo, there's Knight to flash Tongue Lash as well. On to on. He slows him down, but Knight gets the flash, a double root, the knockup. Not hitting there from missing as Kanavi goes under tower for JDG. A little bit messy and BLG survived. Knight still had his ultimate. And like there are so many ultimates available for JDG. I'm True. surprised they didn't commit more to the play. I'm the commit. Maybe they want to just reset, burn the flashes from Elf, do it maybe three minutes later, but they're going to work towards that help. But oh. it's going to be the ultimate from Knight. Yeah, speaking of those ultimates, oh. there's <laughs> the pick they were looking for on. I, I don't like to say it, but that one was off. Uh, that, they're writing the script for uh, sure. I don't know what's happening there, but. You just had to see that one in Munch. Double ult be used in the end, and a kill going over to JDG. BLG going to get a trade on the top side, but they committed hard for that, and it hasn't failed them yet. Let's be real, in both games, setting up Roller for success, getting that plating, he has been the carry, the AD carry that would. Once again, he gets a bit of freedom in the bottom lane. Yeah, and he has the pull as well, so he's more than happy to just be a farming in the bottom lane. Although even, but that kill from Knight and Kanavi helping out the bottom lane, a bit of a disrespectful walk up from on. I mean, you know that the Lissandra still has ultimate here, and his sweeper didn't spot anyone out, so he thought it was fine. You can see the... Uh Missing, trying to predict the flash there, but Knight CC chain is so long that On couldn't even flash in time to get onto the top catch knockup. Now Shun wants to try and make a play on the map himself. And get up towards his top side. Season to assist is available now, as Kitty said before, but 369 also has the all out. Been with the needlework, but he's waiting so long. Yeah, really important to mention Shun did get that Herald during the replay. 369, CC chained up, the Nino work is there and should be able to oh. finish the job. They make it look easy on the top side. But Kanabi's coming in as well, no Cyclone available. He has to just sit there and watch as we finally see a bit more action from Shun top. Unfortunately, couldn't drop the Herald because we also see Knight rotating towards uh. his top lane. So really nice that Kanabi was able to cover, although 369 did fall as a result. But BLG, they know what they're supposed to do, and that is just invest everything. On to Bin. Um, the, the kill went into Shun's hands, though, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, Shun 2 0 0. 20 CS down, but having two kills. I'll be very happy with the way this one's going. And that's important because we talked about this BLG composition. They do have to be proactive. They do mm. have to have a lead when we head towards the mid game. And they're getting close to 1,000 gold ahead as we speak. But as we know so far in this series, that's not enough. Let's be real. We've had back and forth <laughs> dragons. We've had gold leads that have expand evenness to about 25, almost 30 minutes sometimes. For JDG, they've been in control of this series, really, in the majority from the word go. So for BLG, let's see how that proactivity keeps up. We do have a minute 15 towards the Dragon, guys. So I want to point your attention there. I want to point your attention towards the items that are getting close to being finished. Bin, in particular, with the Rift Maker, feels like it'll be coming soon. And I should also say, alongside Elku, should be getting towards that Gale Force soon as well. Yeah, this Zaya did not get punished for burning both summoners early on from that rotation of JDG, but I was just looking at the mid lane matchup. I mean, there's a reason why Ari is such high priorities, because she gets constant push. And if Knight is consistently getting stuck in his lane, then that allows Shun to do whatever he wants. And you can really see the vision being set up by BLG for this upcoming dragon. Yeah, a bit of an issue for the Lissandra as well, when Lissandra is one of the champions that you kind of know of and think of as mm. a champ that wants to leave that mid lane. So yeah, stuck under the tower can be a bit problematic. But the thing is, no matter how far ahead JD, uh, BLG get in this early game, 
ADG's team fighting has been absurdly good oh, this yeah. year. The comebacks they've had across the course of playoffs have been insane. Harold comes down in the mid lane. Knight can't quite defend the second plate there. We'll finish off the Herald. So two plates going to Yaga and Shun. Moving down the bottom lane, Ruler just going to catch his way before the Dragon comes out as well. Ten seconds. No vision right there for JDG. They're going to have to walk into this river blind as On is waiting for a pick himself. Hex flash over, spotted now by that ward as Dragon now spots. Shun's here too. I mean, what's the game plan here for BLG? It feels like they should be the ones still in the driver's seat for the time being. Like, how do they brute force things like this, Dragon? I mean... Early on, Yago did have that Spellbook Cleanse available, so it was pretty much impossible for JDG to ever engage onto this Ari. So perhaps BLG playing with the vision that they've been able to set up, but now unfortunately given over to JDG, it's going to be a little bit hard to play with those picks, which we see the Vine Ari do so well. We'll prioritize the bottom side helping out. Dragon almost down and just dead. Okay, JDG oh. walk out and Bin walks back towards the top lane. So again, I feel like we're seeing this recurring trend, guys. BLG either being a little bit slow to the objective or not having the item advantage, willingness and confidence to fight. And look at the soul as well. Hex tech soul with JDG oh, already having baby. two drakes for themselves, <laughs> having a composition that loves a team fight. I mean, that feels dangerous for BLG. It ain't over yet. BLG certainly have the tools to find some picks, but I feel like we need to see them look for some picks. Most definitely. And Kanavi making his way towards his bottom lane once again, but mid lane is so pushed in yeah. by Yago, so it's going to be impossible for this Lissandra to rotate towards his bottom lane. So if they do take this, Ari and Vi are going to be there first, and this could be a trap set up for JDG. Let's hope On doesn't disrespect the game, because he walked into the brush last time, and he got punished for it as Elks left alone. Oh, that TikTok. Is so patient. He's not walking up, though. Ruler then spotted and missing as well with that ward. But Kanavi isn't yet. Yeah, exactly that. The problem, this is this is the fundamental problem with having a top catch, right? Who actually starts that play? <laughs> Unless they walk really, really close. Right now. Them. Okay, gonna get started with the cease and desist at the very least. Munch, you're taking on the time catch, but bought some time as Ruler's ulti in reverse. Big missing, still not dead. Who can kill this frog? He's just vibing what? in the bottom side. The hook comes out though after the flash from on. We'll be oh, yeah, with that. And a flash from Missing as oh. well. The dash from the Gale Force and Frost is there, but not enough damage to get a kill. Night of Flash! JDG managing to turn the play around, managing to survive the attempt from BLG. One Spirit Rush still available. Charm misses as well. Does Night go in? There's a Glacial Path taken. Yes, oh. it is. Onto the 80 carry, but Elk fires back. The root not coming through from the Blade Caller. And BLG stared them down. Both teams on the cusp in this game three, but no one overcommits. Ultimates burn from BLG and they get absolutely nothing. I mean, they did get the Tom Kench summoners, but that's about it. Tom Kench, you get an extra 300 gold, but it doesn't mean too much in terms of setting him behind. So, this is an overall dub that JDG will be more than happy to take. I love that Knight massively delays his recall there. He's like, Just go case. on, Elf, three for the way. <laughs> I dare you. He still has that ultimate available. You know. He can finish off that Zaya, but won't find anything. Just push the wave. We'll reset now himself. And we'll have to wait till Dragon coming up next before we see the next fight. Maybe second Herald. I'll talk to you guys about that in a second. But don't you think it's just funny how this series has developed? Game one was an all-out war. It was bloodthirsty. Yeah. Mm, Game two, exactly. we were teetering on the edge of a lot of fights, and there was a bit more blood. Now we have three kills in 14 minutes, and I feel like it's also because BLG know they're against match point, know that they're in, in jeopardy of losing their championship here. JDG are the ones who... Oh, on triple match point. And for BLG, it's a hard pill to swallow. But JDG is just playing so disciplined on both sides of the map. They and are. it's incredibly hard to ever kill Ikasante unless you get the perfect E stun from Shun. And in bottom lane, I mean, you did chuck everything onto this Tom Kench, but the red and white from Ruler was just zoning everyone up in the 2v3. Speaking of, here we go. On to missing. Oh, it's going to be used. Seeks to assist. Teleport in the backside as well. But everything used in this Tom Kench buying time, but he's interrupted as they turn for Ruler. This is oh, it. Oh, knockup is there. And the follow up from Shun. On should have his hook available any second. Cyclone from Kanavi to buy space and time. Gravit him across the team as well. And Bin now trying to chase down Ruler, but can't connect. Oh, the work. Oh, the flash comes through. And it's out to grab the kill. And finally, BLG snapped their jaws shut. JDG going to lose the mid lane turret for it as well. And the gold just plummets upwards. BLG coming together with their team fight. That's what we talk about with this team. And it is great to see it here in a game three. Missing on the time fence. We've seen it before. He has made these mistakes where he's over committed in the lane. The time catch, no flash. Just sit back, buddy. Play for ruler. Hello. Play it safe. But Shun finds the angle. Every ultimate gets dropped onto this time catch because they need something by the time of this game. 
Yeah, the TP coming out from Finn as well to make sure that BLG maintains the numbers advantage here and then just able to follow. It. And you're seeing a big problem with this Lissandra vs. Hari matchup where Yago makes it here first once again. Knight is absent from any of these fights. Yep. 4v5 and BLG are probably going to snowball this out of control now. Yago showing that he can play the Ari too. Great little charm flash coming out. Hang on, Mike. What did you do? Over the top no. side. No, the caster curse is huge. Wait a second, 369 just blinking us for a second there, and he follows it overnight, able to follow the all out. That's gorgeous. And the old top esports boys sync up nicely, looking a little bit grim at first, but a kill going back to JDG with a 30 second death timer. And guys, we do have the dragon coming up in 15 seconds, so. Maybe the advantage for JDG as they get a bit more gold to reset now. That is double ultimates for the solo laners of JDG. Not oh, a clear point, engage for JDG other than Kanavi. So he needs to use his ultimate very wisely. But it seems like they're going to give this third dragon and t get the top tier one. Yeah, it looks like they are looking for that top tier one. No TP available for 369. And Yagao, he may be dead, but he has that teleport available. BLG will find a Drake unless Keno Rogues comes out from Kanavi. But I don't think it's worth trading your life. I think it's a great point you made though, Kitty, as we see the Dragon trade, where when that engage tool's down for JDG, things look a little bit harder, right, to come together, that execution. We talk about JDG's team fighting being great in series, but they're really good tools to highlight here as 369 and Knight feel pivotal to how this game three could go. My worries right now is that although Vi is very ahead in terms of items and she has a bounty on her head, mm -hmm. she is very killable in team fights. And she if is. you generate a big enough gold lead and you accidentally make an overextended play onto Ruler where Tom Kench saves her or something, well, that's just a $500 bounty into a carry for JDG. Yeah. Interesting to see Elk's build in this game as well. The Kraken Slayer coming on through here. Like, quite often you see Zai going for the Gale Force. He just wants to be a turret, which against a Lissandra, <laughs> against a Wukong, that can be tough to just be able to blast out that damage, not have the Gale Force to try and survive those fights. You have the ultimate, you have the cleanse, also the flash as well. You might have 369 in the top side as well, but a true damage coming on through. Yagao should be able to finish the oh. job of the all out. Blinks him back to the other side of the play, getting a bit of healing from the grasp as well. How is he surviving this what? long? The shield comes on through. 369 using that ghost to try and buy himself space. Elk moving over as well on his ear. There's no way out for 369, what? but he still keeps it going somehow. Shun trying to chase it on out. Is this an execute? No way that this is an no. execute. 369 dodges the Q. And somehow it's a kill to the Zai. In the meantime, JDG go in. It's Jason Bourne on the other side of the map as we see the depth charge used on the ruler. BLG had themselves a defensive play in the mid lane, but 369, we saw that last game as well. This guy is on a roll. Man just held the entire BLG's roster in his fist for a good two minutes. They got the mid tier one, dropping that hurl down, also working towards that second. A very good ultimate from on to have at least a bit of threat to stop the map from opening. But JDG, I mean, they just took over the map in terms of turrets. Yeah, they certainly did. And look at the goal difference now, right? We are less than a thousand between our two teams. That's so exciting as we head towards not just the mid game fights, but honestly, we could well see late game 5v5s this game. And that yep. is something, I mean, every LPL final needs a little bit of. Well, I feel like it's the perfect way to take us to a potential game four or to a championship for JDG. Remember folks, we came in today talking about Ruler to pick up his first championship. Will it be this game as 369 is gonna get ganked into Brush? The charm there again. Are we doing this again? All out is oh, available, but not going to be able to use it in time. Teleport oh, coming no. in. Oh no, Knight is in the wrong place here. The core oh, he? comes on through. Has his ultimate available as Kanavi tries to save his mid laner. Evan Frost coming on through. Knight has to ult himself, but everyone from BLG still here on the play. No flash and no Knight. Timing wasn't great, but BLG still find him. And as you say, Baron's now live as of 17 seconds ago. BLG can try and take this worm. Kanavi's still around the drag. I mean, the Baron, but it does seem like VLG going to secure this with the Gwen and Kraken Slay available for Elf. They do trade it for the tier 2 tower mid lane, though, but we've seen JDG crack. 369 is getting caught in the side lane again. Yeah, it feels like they are really focusing on trying to shut 369 out of this game. And 
find these moments. 369 just like, ah, there's no way they're in here again, right? There's just no way. I mean, they burnt so much trying to kill this Asante yeah. once again. The TP from Knight, a bit of a miscommunication. I think he should have just dropped the kill there. But Knight also burning a lot of his abilities here as well. A very bad fight for JDG. And now the Dragon is also on the plate. And you know, I was talking to 957 earlier on uh, backstage, and he was saying to me, he thinks the difference in this series is going to be mid-jungle, right? Game one, game two, we've seen Knight and Kanavi working together great, and Knight has been having the time of his life. Game three on this Lissandra, Knight slipping back a bit, Yagao on the Ari, the playmaking potential between him and Shun has been huge, and it's great to see that now we get to talk about the other mid laner from Pink Xiang, because Yagao's name is on our minds after a couple of great successful plays from BLG. Drake coming up though in 45 seconds. Does feel like BLG currently have control? JDG gonna fight for that. BLG having absolute control in terms of vision for this bottom side. JDG yeah. need to be very careful because BLG's composition, if you get that one charm onto a carry, it's pretty much over. But it does seem like they're Wait, getting forced bin? off bin. Oh, he's in the wrong uh -oh. spot. This is just top laners getting caught out after top laners getting caught out. Kanavi gonna look for the pick. Cyclone comes on through. And Knight is here That's to get everything. the CC chain down. Gwen ain't immune to that. JDG find the pick off and BLG not willing to commit afterwards, it seems like, as they move in as a unit again. Stack up for the Drake. BLG sticking around. They want to still go for the fight. A couple of ultimates were used, but I don't know if they can 4v5. Bin has no TV either, and that's only the Cyclone from Kanavi. They're getting sandwiched here, though. Not sandwiched, suffocated. No, you're right. They it could be sandwiched. a sandwich. They are getting sandwiched as well. <laughs> I mean, the charm comes through, but it's only onto the clone. Dragon stares them down. This will be number three. Is Hexgate used by Yagao on the back end? Five members still here from JDG. Remember, they have numbers as Char oh, goes in. Yagao with a big one, but it's frozen. Soon as the all-out use on the back end as well. And he's down. Uh -huh. BLG took this fight with a numbers disadvantage. What were they thinking? I mean, it's a great engage from Yagao for the enemy team because he just gets absolutely blown up. There's no follow-up whatsoever. BLG, I, I don't know what they were thinking. You should have just dropped us because they had the gold lead, just drop the ego because Bin was dead. BLG, the gumption to pull and try and pull that playoff was huge, but again, is hang on, hang Wait on. Wait a second. On a ward as well, but he backs away. Bin comes in with the needlework on top of missing. 369 disengages. They know that this fish is going back in the pond. So BLG actually getting something long-term. I guess at the end it's a one for one trade because Missing did overstay a tiny dragon, bit. Though. But now, soul point for JDG. Yeah. Hextech soul is so incredibly annoying when you have Aphelios, long range AD carries. You can't get away from the grasp. And of course, Vi, when she goes in, she can't really get out. But we take another replay of what Yago was thinking for this dragon. He was just trying to look for a flank onto Rula, which did connect them to Knight instead. But we didn't know that Lissandra was still available for the side of BLG. So he got caught by surprise. and. No one expected one singular Cyclone to get rid of Bin for that pick. Yeah, absolutely massive JDG to survive the play. And Knight, crucially, surviving with his own ultimate with missing, yeah. saving the day. And that's, like playing Ari against Tom Kench is incredibly difficult. We, we said it coming into this that playing this comp against JDG, you both were inquisitive about it. We're seeing it on paper here as BLG try to make a play towards the top side. This is another sandwich. Could be an opportunity. A great charm from Yagao. The hook is there as well, but did they have damage to finish Knight off? Ultimate comes through as Kanavi playing protector here, and Knight should be able to claw his way out to safety. Ruler is coming in from the side, but BLG are backing off this outer turret, still providing so much pressure that they want to take down. It does feel like BLG is taking the driver's seat in this game yeah. three, however, so that is very positive sign okay. for a comeback because Bin, he's still consistently pressuring in that mid lane, and Kasaki is going to eventually fall off. Feels like BLG really on the front foot, trying to force the issue, and rightly so, because they're against Soul Point, and they're against a composition that will scale very well later on in the game. Like, Aphelios ain't going anywhere, and the Lissandra late game team fighting is something to be marveled at. Feels like BLG want control in three minutes' time when that Drake comes up. Again for the pick off the back end. I mean, this turret, this is going to be the fourth time BLG are pushing in. They have not backed away from this play as JDG yeah. still hover themselves. And the biggest struggle for BLG right now is just this Tom Kench ultimate that is available for missing. We yeah. mentioned this in the draft, how BLG opted into the Nautilus for this blind Tom Kench. And because BLG works so well of picks, well, a singular ultimate that saves the carries of JDG is going to stop all the abilities from going, oh, it is going to make all the abilities go to waste. So BLG need to be very careful with who they decide to pick, because missing can also be a target for them. It can be. It's eight to four of the scoreboard. 
and it's a 4k gold lead from the LG. And I'm so glad to finally get to this point. Like, this is the point in the game where game one and two were ending for yep. JDG. Yep. BLG, a much stronger performance here in game number three, changing their tact. And I like that three different games, BLG are bringing three pretty dramatically different drafts to the table. They clearly have lots of lots in the strategy book to bring to this festival. And I think we've seen that throughout the split as well, right? The diversity, the champion selection, the, the power that BLG has. That's what's always been their strength. I think Tabe shows that as a coach as well when he's worked with RNG. He can be quite diverse as a, a bit of a battle for Scuttlecrab on our screen. <laughs> I feel like that's really lucky for Shun that he didn't get over that wall. 369 was there too. That's true. I mean, Kanavi was there too, sorry. He would have died for sure, but we are getting towards Dragon. There's a minute 30 to go until that comes through. That's going to be soul point for JDG if they can find it. JDG need to be very careful. They don't have any vision on this Baron with the Gwen, with the true. Kraken Slayer's Eye. They can just sneak it. Kick things off here on, on the scene. Elk using that Kraken Slayer. He's an absolute turret, but there we go. Ward comes out. It's Yagao looking for a pick on tonight, but the Everfrost is there to answer. And it might be Yagao getting picked instead. Trying to escape with Spirit Rush. But 369 is on the flank. In the meantime, Can Baron surely goes down. Cyclone in play. Yeah, Baron's gone in the meanwhile now, turning for the fight. JDG is still looking ambitiously as Yagao has to flash over the wall. BLG getting out, though. Only losing on so far. Another charm lands. And BLG oh, on the chase out with the all out. And 369 takes down Yagao. Three members there, still alive with the cost of Baron. A 45 second death timer on Yagao, 40 seconds until Dragon is up. BLG, they do get the Baron, but they need to fight for this Drake as well. TP available for both Yagao and Bin, so they can realistically take this. Also, the Hexgate is available for On. True. So maybe they deny the Baron and the Soul Point in this next fight. If they can find control with JDG, you can see they're using those hex gates as well, charging towards that area of the map. There's no ultimate available for Knight and Kanavi, so this is going to be a huge lack of CC if they want to take this. Bin just hit level 16 as well, folks. Keep that in the back of your mind with the need of work available and JDG's lack thereof. And look at the ultimates, 369, no ultimate. Kanavi, no ultimate. Ruler, no ultimate. This is tough for JDG. They walk in, BLG looking confident. That hex gate going to be used by on his angle. Pretty good for 369. Oh, the Standing TP. there, zoning him off. Another TP from BLG. They try to get five members in. For Hex Tech Soul. We're now looking down the barrels. Knight doesn't take the glacial path. But Yagao's angle is huge. Oh, Kanavi goes in with the cyclone up on the top side and find the rest of the team. Trying to follow up as well. Missing, surviving. Knight in amongst BLG. Disrupting as a 1v1 oh. oh, goes Elf. up on the top side. And now Chaos is huge. It's a needlework that flies through. But Knight gave them the shamboozies as he goes down. Meanwhile, JDG relying on the again. The world champion breaking down. BLG, the signs of life are there. A massive fight for BLG, a second Drake, and perhaps more as well. They already got the Baron and TP into the wave. As we continue watching this play out, BLG trying to force an end. 369 will kill on, but he's been slowed down so much that the base should be BLG's. No eggs in this finals. We're going to a 2-1 series with the Baron. They're just going to look to the Nexus now. Munch. It wasn't cursed. BLG saw the chance. <laughs> Thank God as well. 369 wants to disrupt that chance. But that minion wave with the Baron buff is huge. And that is plenty for BLG to finish things out. Spins at a quiet series, but wants to find a couple in this last oh, one. Wait, no over. way. We Wait, don't end the what? game. Next guy's going to be used to get on out. BLG oh couldn't end God. it. So close to keeping the series going. But Knight's death timer wasn't long enough, and JDG defend a turretless Nexus. This is going to be such a pain for JDG because look at the mobility available for BLG, but Yago just used up so much time from Kanavi, and this ultimate is huge in terms of engage, where Knight was realistically the only one that was providing the amount of CC onto Elf. A very sad E from this Zaya, but it doesn't matter because you just didn't have the amount of damage that you expect from this Lissandra, so it's all up to Ruler. But Rula having been up in his face, Finn's Gwen is very insane. Oh, it's good to see as well. Again, BLG, I feel like they've woken up in the series. And even though the game doesn't end there, even though the series doesn't go to a game for Finn oh on God. Gwen. Sewing class has <laughs> taken in the past week, apparently. <laughs> that is a That is something else, honestly. But I, I, I don't actually want to talk about Ben right now. I want to talk about Shun. Shun has been pivotal this game. He got that buy once again. It's his most played of the split. 70% win rate on that pick for Shun. And it feels fantastic to see him being that big engage tool for his team. 
Good again because Vashun, he's been a little bit quiet, even on the Kindred, which was his pocket pick. That came through in game two, and we didn't see too much from it, so now seeing the buy is a good sign considering BLG on the cup of taking us to a game four. Fortunately, no major objectives available just quite yet on the map. Two minutes on the Hap Dragon, two minutes on the Baron, so JDG need to play with their base. Nexus is still up and available, no towers protecting it, so if they do one misplay in terms of macro, the amount of mobility can top over the wall and end the game. Yeah, I mean, luckily for JDG, all of the the towers in their base got destroyed off of the back of Baron and Dragon going down. So they do have two minutes respite where there's nothing outside of their base that they need to defend. There's nothing else that they need True. to contest. So they do get this moment to breathe. But the question will be, can BLG continue to just put that pressure on and, and use this space to buy the next objective? And let's anyway? not forget, they're also losing their jungle too. So while JDG might be happy that there's no other objective, Losing their jungle, losing everything on the map means the gold lead is going to increase as that charm starts us off. BLG can taste it. They have been out of this series for two games now with JDG's team fighting being superb. They can taste the potential reverse sweep. All they need to do is get towards the Nexus as BLG let's, are backing away. Let's hold it with the reverse sweep oh. talk for a minute. Yeah, we're, <laughs> they've still not even got a single map on the board just yet. I'm yep. happy to start it. Dragon, <laughs> JDG is more than happy to give this soul point over to BLG. It's just not worth the risk. But Baron is another problem because you already have mid and bottom lane exposed. Their inhibitors are going to go down very fast when they do get that Baron. Maybe even work towards the top one and then get triple inhib. The supers are going to be too much for JDG to deal with because you don't have a Hurricanes and the Lissandra doesn't have amazing wave clear. Relying a lot on the fact that Knight is going to be a pivotal member in this game. Again, it's been nice to see Yakao really stepping up in this game three. On the pick that Knight carried with last game, that was huge on last game. Uh, Yagao has shown up just as much as in a big way. We've got Dragon coming up in 30 seconds as well, gents. And ladies, excuse me. 15 seconds towards Baron 2. Uh, two big objectives covered up. Oh, yeah. And we'll see. As, I mean, just look at the items on the side of PLG right now. Four strong for Elk. And we talked about the Kragas Slayer. He is an absolute turret at this point with the uh, LDR finished off as well. I don't even think Kanavi should go for the, fl for the flip because it's just going to result in a 4v5. I think they have a bigger chance of winning a 5v5 against the Baron buff, against the Soul Point, given over to BLG. But really smart decision from JDG for this specific choice. But how long can they hold on for? Because we have the inhib for bottom lane respawning, I believe. I mean, pretty close. let's just entertain the idea for a minute that, you know, this Drake's going to go over to BLG. You can see no contestion coming out from JDG as their inhib's going to come up in 35 seconds. So we'll be on a neutral spot in the map with Farron over to BLG. Like, what is the win condition for JDG? Can they actually 5v5 at this point, or are they just too far behind? I think Kanavi and Knight need to be protecting Gula. They need to be the front line and provide the amount of CC to lock down Bin. Bin has just been a madman running throughout yeah. these team fights. Gwen, you need to get into a little circle. Stop her from snip snipping Gula. He didn't assign himself to a hairdress or anything. It's not a hair day. So hopefully JDG can play off that because this is going to be the last fight. They're running into that base that you said the inhibitor respawning. Perfect timing as well as 369 hovers around the edge. It's going to be Shun ulting as well. JDG going in for their last hurrah of this game, but Elk in the back line. He can pull in the feathers. Knight gets hit pretty hard as oh, well. Bin's charging Bin forward. is just running into it. The needlework tears through the team, and the feathers are there as well. And in the meantime, it's, it's Shun, sorry, to finish off the kill of the top lane. BLG back in style here in game three. Welcome to the series. BLG are not going to repeat your gal's 2019 failings of spring. Picking up a game means we got a lot more to talk about here. The Emperor's can apparently bleed in our big stage here. The stage of Ben's arena. They're certainly not the Emperor's yet. They uh, have to finish this series off to be crowned as such. And uh, feels like BLG back, back in the series, right? Showing us what what they were doing to, to find themselves in these finals in the first place. Yeah, most definitely. And when it does come to best of series, fatigue just gets to you sometimes. You yep. sometimes forget that I shouldn't be getting caught here. We saw a lot of people misposition, 369 missing in particular, where they were just giving gold for absolutely no reason. And True. BLG taking advantage of this, shouldn't working towards this Gwen, which was the blind from Bin. I mean, he just took over the game and Ruler on the other side didn't get as much as a return. It's funny because we rely on 369 team fighting. We rely on 369 having this really solid foundation that makes JDG tick. This time around, yeah. it was Bin, I think, who had better team fighting, and it was BLG working as a more cohesive unit for the first time in this series. And th the weird thing about JDG in this game as well is, like, I liked their comp 
Yeah. But I don't like it for JDG. Like, this is not the kind of comp that JDG usually plays with. I feel like they've got to be able to scrap more. They've got to be able to really take it to True. their opponents. We're going to jump back to the analyst desk.